Hello Chess World and what I bring to you today is one of my favorite games um between Judith Pogar and Ferenc Berkey's. Um this game was actually played at a Budapest tournament, international tournament in 2003. So you may be a little familiar with the game. The reason why I present the game though is because there's a very interesting part in this game where the black side tries to lay a trap for Judith Pogar and what Ferenc Berkey's plays is logical but it has a hidden flaw in it which Judith Pogar finds and demonstrates a very unique and beautiful refutation so the game begins uh with the move from white with e4 and then we have e6 from black and then d4 we're in a french defense beginning of, of a french defense d5 knight to c3 and knight to f6 and bishop to g5 this is what is known as the burn variation of the french defense and we have black playing d takes e4 white plays knight takes e4 and black plays bishop to e7 getting uh the knight out of the pin from the bishop on g5 white decides to capture the knight on f6 i believe this was done because at some point i think judith was planning to attack on the king's side and that knight is a defender of h7 and um as i look at the game it's just something that you know don't quote me on it but that's just my own personal um interpretation of why i think this knight was captured as well as not to lose time because you know uh you capture the knight he has to capture again with the bishop and well black is the one losing time after uh bishop takes f6 because this bishop has already moved and this is the second time that is moving and we have knight to f3 and you start to see white is building a lead in development already two knights are out and black only has one bishop out and this allows eventually an acceleration of the attack that you're about to see and so black castles and we have queen to d2 and knight to d7 white castles queen side and this ambitious move which at the cost of a tempo allows black to retain the bishop pair uh but it was probably better to play b6 and bishop to b7 immediately um on the next move so that you could get your development um underway so white plays bishop to d3 and then we have b6 from black and knight e to g5 so black's two bishops give uh long-term chances however for the moment white has a lead in development and when you have a lead in development you try to use it very quickly because it doesn't last so what white is doing is directing the lead of development at the king's side for a direct attack and this is something that is aided by this move h6 um which is already a slip in the wrong direction um the simplifying bishop takes g5 knight takes g5 and knight to f6 was probably much much better however um that move was not played and uh, excuse me h6 was played so with with this move uh white decides to play bishop takes h7 check and um this is a crafty move um i really like this move but the other move that i'm going to mention in the game is the one that really i really like but bishop to h7 check is designed to move the king over to the h file it removes the defender from the f7 pawn but it also puts the king in a danger zone which you'll see as the game continues the h file is definitely not safe for the black king by no means and um so that's where the king ends up and then we have bishop to e4 and well the knight looks like it's in jeopardy but white is basically saying in essence if you take my knight i'll just take your rook on a8 right so black does take the knight however white doesn't take the the rook immediately because black thinks he set a trap with this move so um it's a devious trap but judith poga sees directly through it 
So what happens is if 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 the knight um if, if excuse me if this this here a rook is captured well then we have this move g4 and guess what the knight can't move because if the knight moves the bishop comes to g5 and just pins the uh queen to the king right so guess what judith plays g4 instead g4 this response is just brilliant what it does now is is it, it gives another so it gives it gives white another tempo on top of the tempo that um that 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 they've already accumulated look how far behind in development black is the bishop on c8 the knight on d7 isn't really doing anything the queen is on d8 not even in the game the rooks are split not connected yet the bishop that's on c8 it's about to come to b7 but by the time it does um it'll be after the rook has tried to save itself and that's just giving white more time so yes the rook does go to b8 and try and save itself however this g4 move also allowed white to capitalize off the earlier check from the bishop going to h7 and making the king go to the h file simply by this move which is h4 now h4 is threatening to simply just open up the h file with check against the king and it's not really much that black can do about that so he plays g6 h takes g5 and there's the check king goes to g7 remember i mentioned this queen before so this queen maneuver remember the queen was on d1 and went to d2 now it's on f4 right bishop to b7 so what do you think white's next move is going to be h file is open right and white plays rook to h7 check come on king come come back to the h file this is what this is what all of this bishop to h7 check earlier was about this is what g4 is about and this is why we didn't take your rook because we used the time that we knew judith knew you were going to try and save your rook but the time you take to try and save a piece from capture allows her to expedite execute her attack on the king side against your king and this is what we're seeing right here so after the king takes h7 look at this beautiful queen maneuver bang now remember the queen went from d1 to d2 to f4 to h2 very 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 aesthetically appealing to my eye anyway i don't know if you'll find it the same but i really really liked that queen maneuver from d1 e2 f4 and to h2 and the king goes to g8 rook goes to h1 and what we have here already at move 20 from judith polgar is a mate threat remember for those of you who don't know ference Berkey's is not a weak player he was world champion world junior champion hungarian champion and um he's a strong player but he is getting outplayed by judith polgar in this uh tournament in budapest in 2003 and so what we have here is bishop takes g5 right trying to stop the mate threat trying knight takes queen takes and it looks like oh my because white is in check that white may have found a way out the bishop is in prize the king is in check pawn saves the day the pawn saves the day f4 queen takes f4 and you have to give up the queen to stop the mate queen takes f4 bishop takes f4 queen takes f um excuse me e4 and just like that just like that black resigns because it's too much not only is your whole queen up but you know the material deficit is just too much you're a queen down it's judith poga do the honorable thing resign um however i do hope you gathered something from this game about development and um when it's practical to be ambitious and when it's impractical to be a little bit too ambitious as we saw mr burke uh Berkey's do with his bishop meanderings and maneuvers that caused him to lose time um and with that i hope your chess may your chess be the best and please subscribe like comment smash that like button tell your friends to smash the like button share it comment leave some suggestions what game would you like to see me go over What's your favorite opening? Put all of that in the comments below. 
I'm here. We back. This is Chess Optics. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,